Welcome back to another episode of The Knowledge Bomb. In this week's episode, we're gonna take an in-depth look at a year-long skeleton, specifically around testing and the best places to put it. All right, everyone, I'm gonna take a little bit of time and lay out a general thought process on skeleton before we get started. This is gonna tie directly into last week's episode talking about goals. So if you haven't seen that episode, make sure you look it up, go watch that, come back, finish this. A skeleton, now what is a skeleton? It's basically just a rough draft of the year to come. We can create a skeleton within a cycle. If a cycle is a month long, six weeks long, we can create a skeleton of that. We can create a skeleton of a uh, in multiple cycles or even a year of training. And so I definitely like to start there after we've established some goals. And why? Pretty much because after you establish some goals, you have a timeline. You know that in January, in May, or August, or whatever it is, you're gonna be competing, and that's when you wanna be your best. And so I always like to reverse engineer what we wanna create. So now that you know when you're going to compete, the next step is saying, how are we gonna get there? So the skeleton is basically just a rough draft or a roadmap on the best approach to get there uh, from a year-long view. So working backwards, if this is your goal, and we're just gonna call it game day, okay? That can be a competition, it can be a, a vacation, right? You wanna become a beach body ready, so to speak. Uh, we're just gonna say that it's out here. Now, um, you just don't start training with this in mind if that makes sense. You're going to leave a lot on the table in terms of what you can do and the building blocks in which you can start to stack and really create some momentum in your training and your progressions. And so, if this is game day, and let's just say this is 12 months out, okay? So, we're looking 12 months, one year from today. You've already made your social statement, right? You understand the resources that you have available, right? You understand what this month, this day, this week is gonna look like and where it kind of fits into your life. So now let's talk about, right, day one, right here. What should we be doing? Well, a lot of people think, well, we should test right away. And this is assuming that you've come out of um, a previous game day. So maybe it's a competition, maybe it is that, that beach body vacation, right, where um, you put everything into it and you, know, you did you know, emotionally, physically, just kind of spent. So starting on day one, I'm not a big fan of testing right away whole bunch of different reasons. Chances are uh, you've stressed your body, right? Potentially, depending on what you're competing in and what you're striving for, you're probably a little bit deconditioned, right? Competition uh, or even just um, kind of peaking for a goal tends to take a lot out of people. So I personally like to take a block of training um, and we could just say four weeks right in here that is going to reacclimate you to the volume and intensity to prepare you to train. This is gonna keep you safe. It's gonna help you protect your joints, uh, tendons, connective tissues, things like that. Last thing we wanna do is get injured. So taking about four weeks to prepare to test is a really, really smart thing. An easy way to do it is in your training, you're just gonna increase volume. So you can go from three sets here and in week one, and then you can go four sets of whatever you're doing in week two. In week three, maybe you peak at five sets of work, and in week four, let's say we're gonna deload back down to three sets. Now, this is a pretty generic uh, you know, cycle illustrating volume. Basically, increase volume over the course of three weeks slowly, and then in the last week, you can think about this as just a little bit of a deload, again, to rest before testing. Now that you've done that, we can look at another four weeks of testing, okay? Um, right here, we wanna test. I'll get in depth about what we should test, how you should approach 
uh, creating the tests that you need to help develop the rest of training. But for now, we're just talking about timelines and just the overall structure of your year. I would say, depending on who you are, how complex of an athlete you are, you can expect anywhere from two to six weeks of testing. Now, honestly, six weeks of testing is a lot, and that is a lot emotionally, physically, and psychologically. Some people love testing, other people find it really, really stressful, and it takes a lot out of them. But either way, uh, creating a block of testing, you want to develop the testing specific to your goal. Again, we're gonna go into details about that. But just realize, outside of testing, uh, is where our training is going to start. Whatever you find out in testing, right, whatever numbers, whatever feedback, assessments that you complete in testing, that is going to drive the remaining uh, 10 months of training. So this testing becomes very, very important. If you misread, uh, don't execute the testing or maybe get the wrong tests in there, it's going to create a ripple effect that's going to create a bunch of inaccuracies and essentially the remaining 12 months, 10 months of, of training, uh, you're going to leave a lot of performance on the table. So when we talk about training, uh, just say, you know, if these are four week blocks, I personally like to write training cycles that last about four to six weeks. They're easy to manage. Uh, you can see the progress in there. It gives you enough time to reassess and see if things are actually working uh, without having to constantly test uh, all the time and take away from training. As a general principle, right, we want testing and assessment to be very, very segregated from training. It's important not to confuse the two. So, after I develop testing and I've gotten into my training, I'm already thinking about when the next testing period is going to be. It's important to think about retesting because that's going to confirm whether your training is working or not or whether you need to adjust the training. You don't want to basically commit to 10 months of training only to find out that you've missed out uh, on things that you could have adjusted, changes you could have made to make uh, better progress. So I personally would just right in the middle about six months, seven month mark, think about retesting. Okay, this can be uh, a shortened version of the original tests. Definitely want to pull the same tests because you're basically comparing data from your initial testing uh, in the retesting, okay? You want to know, uh, let's just say you wanted to increase your aerobic capacity and strength in the big lifts. Pretty easy, right? So you want to know if your aerobic capacity and your strength is better here than back here. So you're basically saying, after your initial four weeks of testing, that you kind of, uh, you're making a statement saying, well, I'm gonna train X, Y, and Z to improve what I need to improve. The retesting is going to allow you to see if it's actually working, okay? So it, are the training protocols that you're implementing here actually working? This gives you an opportunity to refine, uh, edit, change directions, uh, whatever is needed, right, before uh, game day six months later. Now this is pretty conservative. Uh, six months apart in, in testing uh, is, is probably the, the minimum I would do. I, depending on who you are, you could retest every three months. Um, just realize the more retesting and testing you put in, the bigger interruption and effect it's gonna have in training. Okay, the longer we can have training periods, the more uh, momentum and the more progress we can make. So anytime you put in a testing period, testing cycle, you're gonna interrupt that, uh, that training flow, if you will. So once we've done this, the question is, okay, how are we gonna fill this time, okay? Now, we're just making an assumption on the tests and the goals. So again, we're just talking about general overview and general layout. What you want to think about is developing 
foundational layers based on the priorities that you need to develop. Those priorities are basically attained from the goals that you have, right? Or the characteristics that you need to develop. So if one of those characteristics, for example, is aerobic development, right? Aerobic uh, endurance, then um, in order to succeed at your sport, your game day, whatever your, your, your goal is, then you want to develop uh, basically foundational layers that can build upon one another in that aerobic endurance. Hey guys, before we get started, I wanna invite you to comment below and just take a couple minutes, maybe share, tag a friend, um, and just start a conversation. These topics are developed based on your feedback, your questions, so the more questions we get, the more discussions we get, uh, just the more we can learn together. And so if you have something that you disagree with me, if you have something that you wanna add to this discussion, just go ahead and comment below and let's get the discussion going.